Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech Number 6, where today I'm going to talk about the top 50 EDH cards that were not sold in the Commander packs. One of the reasons this topic is so exciting to me is that Commander is really what brought me back into playing Magic. I hadn't played for about three or four years after heading off to law school, and when at a local card store here in the Seattle area, actually a large gaming store, Card Kingdom, I saw some people playing Commander and playing with cards that I really hadn't used since Vintage. It wasn't called Vintage anymore when it was called Type 1, and I got excited about building a, this 100-card singleton deck, and that really transitioned me back into where I am now, which is playing a pretty good amount of competitive tournaments. Now, jumping into this, I want to say that these statistics come from a Magic Salvation post that went through and automatically correlated cards from about two and a half thousand deck lists online. And then I took those informa that information and looked at the top 200 cards that were used in Commander, and I pulled out everything that was actually sold inside the Commander decks and distilled it down to basically the 50 cards that are most commonly showing up in EDH decks that are not sold in the Commander decks. Now, take a second here, pause, see if you can guess what a few of those are before I show you the complete list. The next slide is the complete list. So here is the complete list. Uh, at the top we've got Sensei's, Sensei's Divine Top, and these are the 50 most common cards that show up in EDH decks that are not in Commanders, the pre-constructed Commander deck. There's uh, several things I'm going to talk about this list, but I'd recommend pausing here, taking a look through the list, and trying to answer a few questions for yourself. First, which of these cards do you think is the most valuable, and which of these do you think is undervalued? And maybe even a guess at what you think the average value of these cards are. Now I'm going to move on, and we're going to look at some of the statistics, because one of the things that I love almost as much as I love playing strategy games is looking at statistics. 16% of these cards are card draw in some way. Consecrated Sphinx and Sylvan Library being two of my absolute favorite. Uh, Sylvan Library is one of those cards that I currently use a significant amount in Legacy, and Consecrated Sphinx is just a staple in the standard environment. Something that was really interesting to me was the inclusion of a really nice common here, Ristic Study, which has definitely made it into our playgroup, and Cryptic Command has, has to be one of the most exciting, most fun, versatile EDH cards out there, and a staple in the modern environment, although it's a little bit slow in modern. Phyrexian Arena is also just a wonderful staple draw card. Even with the double black, it's made it into this top 50 list, which is pretty impressive. That Cryptic Command at triple blue, and Phyrexian Arena at double black have made it in. Next area that people are really likely to end up wanting cards is tutors. 22% of the list tutors in some way, with the most popular of those being Demonic Tutor, and my favorite being Green Sun Zenith. Expedition Map is one of the least expensive ones on the list, and it really lets you go get your cool individual lands. If you've got a single Maze of Ith, or maybe you've put in a single dual land into this deck that you really like, uh, Trinket Mage was a little bit of a surprise to me until I remembered that the number one card was Sensei's Divining Top, and Trinket Mage really gives you two tops in here. It can also let you go get a little bit of some of the better graveyard hate, and being able to get uh, Tormon's Crypt, or the next category that was extremely popular was removal. 20% of the cards on there are removal in one way or another, with things as versatile as Beast Within and Wrath of God. Um, both versions of Wrath of God, Damnation, which I think has one of the best pictures for Wrath of God and wonderful color splash there. One thing to really notice about all the different forms of removal is usually the, the removal that has made it onto this list is not simple one type, one single piece of removal, but it's often versatile or has some extra abilities such as exile, remove from game, uh, destroy without chance of regeneration, or it can hit several different types. The Steel Hellkite is one of those that can deal with a lot of different permanents that are out there. 
the most popular category on the list is mana acceleration, 24% of the list, one in every four cards on there, has something to do with mana acceleration. Now, Prime Time, their Primeval Titan, has got to be the best of the six casting cost creatures and most popular in my current play group. It's often whoever gets a Primeval Titan out first that really ramps into their overpowered spells, or whoever gets a Rite of Replication off kicked on this that is able to close out a game. Uh, Gauntlet of Power and Extra Planar Lens have also been extremely popular in my playgroup. Something of a real interest to me, though, is the way that Mana Vault has jumped up in price for the Alpha and Beta since Commander has become really popular. I picked up a Beta Mana Vault mint condition for about $100 uh, almost a year ago when I got into Commander, and I ended up trading it for around $250 towards a Lotus that I picked up. The price has just shot up significantly. Uh, Oracle has got to be one of my favorite acceleration cards out there because it really kind of acts as a card draw and mana acceleration at the same time. One thing that I wanted to let people know about though is a piece of tech that isn't on the list at all and I often see sitting around in uh, quarter boxes or even nickel boxes is recross the path. It's a form of mana acceleration that's one green, two colorless, basically reveal cards off the top of your deck until you hit a land, and then you put that land directly into play, untapped, which is amazing acceleration, and then you clash with your with an opponent, which means you basically show the top card of your library to each other, and whoever's got the highest casting cost wins. If you win the clash, it comes back to your hand, and then you have the option to put the card on the bottom of your library that you clashed with or leave it on the top. So this is mana acceleration, it's got a little bit of card selection built into it, and it puts that land into play untapped. It's also extremely inexpensive. I recommend this as a way to increase the mana acceleration in your green decks. Some really interesting st statistics, though, are also what was not included in this top 50. There wasn't a single burn spell. Now individuals may be asking, where's something like Bonfire of the Damned? Well, this list was compiled with statistics from Innistrad uh, on back, so Bonfire hadn't made it out yet. Maybe Bonfire will be the first burn spell to make it into the EDH Top 50 uh, card list here. I would definitely watch out for it in that category because it has that removal aspect to it, and it's a one-sided type of removal for a very reasonable price if you can miracle it. But overall, Burn just doesn't hold up at all in EDH. Uh, there was also no land destruction, which this is one of the common mistakes, and I'll do another video at another point in time about uh, EDH common mistakes for new players. But uh, people think, well, we, we're just going to add some land destruction to our deck and then beat people very quickly as I don't let them cast their overpriced spells, although that is a valid strategy for winning. EDH is more about the social aspect of the game, and allowing people to cast their spells is pretty important. Uh, there was no land destruction. I was actually pretty surprised not to see Armageddon, as that has been popular in a few different playgroups that I've seen around. Uh, but the flavor of EDH is one of interacting with people and not just denying them all access to be able to cast those overpriced spells that, as we've seen from 24% of this list, people love to ramp mana and cast those overpriced spells in this format. There's also zero infect. This has got to be one of the most hated mechanics in the play group, uh, groups that I play in, although it's definitely still used. I was surprised not to see a single infect card on that list. A few groups that I'm with have definitely thrown an infect creature or two in there as a last resort if somebody gets too high on uh, life and their commander has been tucked with a hinder or a bell crumple, but there wasn't a single infect, so maybe this is just a scattle area that it appears that most people are definitely avoiding infect. I, I think that another way to deal with infect would be to actually increase the number of poison counters in, so that it's not so over-the-top powerful compared to everything else. If you increase the number of poison counters to 15 or 20, it would be a lot more balanced than it is at 10. Most of my decks where I consider blood Blightsteel Colossus in the past, I've actually pulled it out because I hate having it briberied against me, and I would rather not give my opponent a one-turn win off of a five-casting cost card. 
So I've been avoiding uh, in effect overall in my decks. Take a second and see if you can guess what the average price was for cards on this list. Let's go back to the list here for a second and give you a minute. An average cost of a card on this list is seven dollars. Now that does remove one outlier. One card on that list actually brings that price up a few more dollars. Um, but if you take out the one expensive outlier, it appears that EDH players are very happy to pay about seven dollars for a quality rare to put into their EDH deck. The one outlier on the list was Mana Crypt, the most expensive by far, at $80 or so. Although I actually haven't seen many Mana Crypts played, I wonder if this is people wishfully putting it, them into online lists or not. Uh, there were several cards though on that list that were clearly underpriced at the $7 average, and these are the biggest ones for underpriced. Now, you might be wondering, what, what does it mean Mana Vault's underpriced? Because I just talked about it being $250 or so, but it's been printed so many times that you can often pick up the third, fourth edition copies that are slightly played for 50 cents or a dollar, and I cannot keep them in my trade binder. Every time we're on EDH players, they just grab them. Coalition Relic's about $3 currently, and Steel Hellkite's only $1.50. All of these cards are severely underpriced for that average, and I'd recommend picking them up and putting them in your trade binder if you are getting into EDH, because they're both staples and reasonably priced. This has been Brian Rowe with the top 50 EDH cards that are not in Commander. Thank you.